for cast iron cooking. And I, I don't think we're going to be doing too much lecture because how many people in here cook with cast iron Dutch ovens? Oh, the propensity of us. Okay, <laughs> well, maybe, maybe we can throw out a few trivia facts that, uh, that you don't know about it. And uh, for all of you guys that are skilled camp cooks, go ahead and jump in when, when you feel the need. As, as, as soon as possible. As soon as possible. No. <laughs> well, th th this is always a favorite subject of mine because Robert Baden Powell said that a scout eats to live. He doesn't live to eat. But he should appreciate a well prepared meal and be able to prepare one if asked to do so. Personally, I hate the aluminum cook kits. Uh, I was a scoutmaster for 20 years, and we went almost totally to cast iron cooking simply because of the ease of cleanup, and it's as non-stick as Teflon, doesn't require the care. Um, it's, just, it's just a beautiful, beautiful <coughs> piece of equipment. Um, I tell my, my boys that if you're getting to the age that you're, you're trying to associate with young ladies, the only way to endear yourself to a young lady is to say, darling, you're prettier than a shiny, clean piece of cast iron. <laughs> and a few of them have tried that. And <laughs> <laughs> Don't know how they were. <laughs> bloody, <laughs> bloody, bloody cast iron. No. Um, but it, it's, it's my opinion that you can make anything with the gear setting here on this table that you can if you're watching Alton Brown on TV and he has his $100,000 professional kitchen going on. You can do it here. You can probably do it better because you're cooking on a campfire or you know, in a smoky area and that just adds that flavor and, and you're more hungry when you're cooking out. So, um, I had a consulting unit that I asked a question of and I said, if you were brand new to cast iron, what are the three things you'd want to learn about cast iron? And they said, mm -hmm. One, how to care for it. Two, how to make sure the kids can cook non-stick. And three, what was the third one, Jason? Temperature. Temperature. How long, how long to cook it. That's right, how, how long the temperature control. So, um, in the handout that I gave you, the first page is just a, a list of websites that talk about <laughs> cast iron cooking in general. The second and third pages are different types of calculus on how you adjust the heat in your Dutch oven, okay? How many guys have kids that, you know, fry, do everything like if they're using a blowtorch, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Get, get them to tone it down. And Don, you brought, you brought something fun that would be useful with a blowtorch, okay? <laughs> this is not a cast iron Dutch oven. How many of you guys still have aluminum Dutch ovens in, in your troop for, for weight and ease? And have you had any problems with them at all? They melt. Kids? They melt. They melt very easily on a campfire. Um, they have a they're not designed for a campfire. <laughs> well, wow. they're, they're not designed for a campfire, but do all your scouts know that? <laughs> we had a couple of aluminum Dutch ovens, past tense. Uh, that, that develop nice holes in the bottom because you're, you're right, they melt if they should happen to use them on a fire. They're, they're to be used with coals. So, speaking about coals, all you guys out there, how many use standard charcoal briquettes? Okay. Dutch oven cooking, yeah. Dutch oven cooking, yeah? Okay. Um, how many use a wood fire burnt down to coals? Mr. Trippy. Okay, Vince, just because your hand was the first one up, what's, what's, what's the best campfire that will give you coals for cooking, Dutch oven? Well, I guess if you have your druthers, you bring hardwood, okay. some nice oak if you had your, if you had your options. Okay, if you have it, if you have that available to you, if you're using a wood fire, you want to use your oaks, uh, your other hardwoods, ironwood, uh, we call it ironwood around here, it's American half hawthorn, uh, maple if, if it's there, um, uh, cherry wood sometimes, that's kind of an in-between. 
But if you're using a lot of pine and birch and the softwoods, those, those burn up real well and give you a pile of ash real quick, but they don't give you a lot of long-lasting holes for, uh, for discussion. Don, did you have something to say about your temperature adjustment uh, you brought with you, <laughs> your chart? We just use uh, briquettes. But okay. I was going to say that we did have um, aluminum pudgy pie makers that, you know, those you put in the fire when you're toasting stuff, and yeah, they slid right off the little handle that they had. Just pushed it on, yeah. That's a little nuts. Pretty color to the fire once oh, you drop them in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like pepper almost, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. And we basically got our aluminum one. I don't know where we inherited them from, but um, we do have other cast iron ones in the box, and we have, I don't know, six or eight other ones. That we use as well. Okay. So, what? How do you set up a patrol with with your cast iron? Uh, you asking me? Or? Yeah, anybody. Oh, okay. you, you can start. That, that's just the question I'm throwing. Well, we have um, we have five or six of the 12 inch Dutch ovens, and then a bunch of the the smaller ones. So each patrol gets at least one 12 inch for whatever they're cooking, and then kind of a, as you need it. Generally, some of the leaders know more than other leaders, so they grab the right Dutch ovens for their patrol that they're helping first, okay. um, especially at that summer camp. Um, the, these flat bottom ones are great for summer camp for on your Coleman stoves because they don't have the feet. Um, if you guys use the shepherd stoves up at summer camp, those are great to just sit flat on the, on the griddles at camp. Um, and yeah, those you can cook. You know, we cook everything, green beans, the stew, the potatoes, whatever. Uh, breakfast, bacon, you know, you just throw bacon in there. It, it's flat, it's a big kettle. It, like you said, it doesn't. We have the aluminum cook kits as well. Um, these are a lot easier to clean. Um, and, and they're bigger than the, the pots that you get in the aluminum thing. So um, if anyone knows where to get a few more of those, we'd, we'd like to get some. But, okay. Um, Anybody else have a different, uh, do, they, do they set patrols up like our troop when we were when we were acquiring cast iron, uh, we, we tried to make sure each patrol had at least one 12-inch uh, Dutch oven, uh, one uh, flat griddle. This one's a square one, but the patrols use those, those rectangular ones. Um, and then one, one of the kind of deep dish cast iron uh, with a handle and, a, and, a lid. and then one uh, large Type of frying pan, and, and that can usually serve the patrol well if you if you augment that with a couple of the aluminum pots for you know warming up the green beans right, or right. the canned whatever you're making. Um, one of the reasons I'm I'm such an advocate of learning how to cook is I've I've looked around at a lot of troops and, and just in different areas. Uh, my my wife and I have been bumming around the country in our RV for the past year and a half. And if there's a scout camp, I'll stop in. And if there's a scout group camping in the National Forest, well, I'll stop by and, and talk to them. And I'm getting the feeling that, that our scouts are falling away from the ability to cook real food. They're, they're you know, opening cans and, and cooking instant rice. And you know, just uh, it's a very quick type of thing. And they're not learning how to cook. We had a, a problem a few years ago at, at Lefebvre. And those of you who have been around for a while, Thursday used to be Turkey Day. And they'd issue turkeys to the troops and they'd cook them. And I'm told that one of the reasons they got away from issuing turkeys was that the ranger, just happened to be one, one of the fellows on my wood badge patrol, Mr. Soslinski, um, he said he was just finding whole raw turkeys, that the, the troops were issued the turkeys, and they dumped them in the garbage because they didn't either have the wherewithal uh, the knowledge or the desire to cook turkeys. Um, and it's not that tough. Uh, the same thing happened, they switched to chicken. And within a couple of years, we were down to chicken patties, the pre-breaded chicken patties, because the kids weren't cooking them. They were throwing them away raw. Um, so if, if anybody <coughs> needs somebody to come out and show your guys how to, how to cook uh, stuff, give me a call. We'll, tr we'll try to arrange something. If, if, you know, you, you need some help. I know this guy group here is uh, is pretty good on all the all the scout skills. Usually. Yes, sir. One thing we'll do sometimes too is we'll have if we have two or three patrols, 
you know, from time to time. But if we go camping, we'll have maybe one day if it's not a big camp and we're doing something, we'll have a cooking contest and we'll do Dutch oven cooking and we'll say the adults are the judges and whoever's is the best, we'll clean up your camp from, from dishes. Yes. Well, and then, then they don't really start thinking about it, right? Well, we don't have to do dishes. We'll just clean it up. But the loser still has to clean yours. So they come up with some good ideas that way and then they start asking, where are those cookbooks? Where do you keep all the Dutch oven cookbooks? I mean, then they'll start trying to do stuff. That's one way to kind of force them a little bit. And we did that last at a patrol meeting or a church, we went on the parking lot and we made we had a Dutch oven cobbler contest during one of the meetings. And they came in, it was about an hour and a half meeting, so it was the right amount of time. And they actually made three different good cobblers that were, they were all good. Do most of you guys make just cobblers or do you make? No, we make our, I try I mean, you guys them. made, what was that, stir fried chicken or I mean, at the camp? Sweet and sour crude, chicken. Sweet and sour chicken, which. Uh, real rice. Yeah, real rice and everything. It, 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 it looked good. Just looking at it, and it's like, wow, I never had that on a camp out before. I love that. It's not specific to Dutch ovens, but I, I like to try to get the guys to recognize how they should plan to cook some of these meals that you might think nothing of cooking at home. You know, oh, it takes a certain amount of, you know, I turn on the burner and away it goes. They have to, I think part of the thing is, they struggle to do that at home, or they don't ever do that at home with their younger scouts. Mom or dad does it all. And then the other thing is, they don't, for example, think of the best ways to, for example, cook those chicken breasts that we used to get issued to us. And the instructions don't tell them the, the ways to cook them correctly to make sure that they're safe for camp. Well, safe